<laughs> every time I, 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 I look at my face without my glasses on the screen of OBS, Open Broadcaster uh, Software, um, I think of the, the theme from Perry Mason, the original old black and white theme, right? <laughs> it's just something about the lighting here. Because there is some lighting that they would have in common uh, in in a lot of older black and white uh, programs and movies. There, there are certain techniques that you can use, and especially with high contrast, that... Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, culturalism. Culturalist. And I know it's not a word, it's not like a regular word that you'd find in the dictionary, at least it wasn't the last time I looked anyway. It is something that would describe, you know, it's, I mean, it's the same type of thing as racism, homophobia, uh, misogyny, where it's not necessarily a hatred of, but it's this thing of uh, let's let's try to keep separate and let's not allow for integration and let's not allow for a number of things. And there are a lot of people who are culturalist. And what makes this different from xenophobia is xenophobia is pretty much about any culture but your own. It's not a word to describe uh a mistrust of specific cultures or a specific set of cultures you know it's it's all cultures other than your own and a number of people who have who are culturalist only have a negative feeling towards specific cultures or even just one culture and i think everyone has a little bit of that somewhere it could be a culture that you fear a little bit. You fear it, and you could, and there could be discussions about whether that fear is rational or logical or not. Um, but um, I mean, then you could get it. That could be just a huge argument. I mean, is it rational and logical to be? worried about standing under a tree that's that's the only tree in this whole field during an electrical storm you know i mean there's the chances of things and so how do you judge that how do you judge whether someone's fear is founded or not that's a that's a difficult discussion. That's a difficult conversation. And uh, there are some places where you it's it's I mean it's blatant that yeah that's a that's a pretty rational fear to to have, um, you know it's a rational fear to uh, if you go uh, parachute jumping it's a rational fear to that you know what if the parachute doesn't open. You know, and if what if something, and if that happens, what if the secondary one doesn't work out so well, and you go to the ground still too quickly and like break all your break a bunch of your bones or something? You survive, but you break a bunch of bones. So, Trump's policies are going to be culturalist. The war on drugs is culturalist. And the thing is, culturalism can look just like racism. Because there are a lot, there are still, the lines are blurry, but there still is an associate, people of certain races associated with certain cultures. It's not locked down to those things, but there's still some things that are very common. And if we make things difficult for everyone, except those who are in the majority, because alcohol and cigarettes are, you know, that's the meat and potatoes of the 
of, I don't know what what to call it. If I say white culture, people will say, well, what do you mean by that? Okay, how would I describe it? The majority culture. Well, I'm not like that. Oh, Jesus Christ. How do you word it? Right? Um, and so that's where it, it, people can get very racist ideas of what this is about. But it's it's about culture. It's not actually about race. So it is difficult to word this. But I'll say the majority culture. Alcohol and cigarettes, that's the meat and potatoes of the majority culture. To allow for other types of... I mean, okay, maybe I, sh I should explain this too. Every drug has a culture kind of behind it. And people of that culture know how to deal with other people of that culture, whichever you know drug it's associated with. Okay, alcohol has, alcohol has a culture behind it. Weed has a culture behind it. Uh, cocaine has a culture behind it. Meth has a culture behind it. And I say it that way because I, it's, it's very difficult for me to look at meth in any sort of positive way. I mean, it's just very, very difficult. But, you know, there is a culture behind it in any of the drugs. And... When we, I mean, this recent thing about uh, Trump, uh, his administration, suggesting that uh, they might have the federal government uh, crack down on marijuana in the states where it, the, the recreational use is, has been legalized. And, you know, it's, it's disturbing. But it goes right along with what most of us have been saying. You know, it's not, oh, he's not all for states' rights. He's just... You know, people complain about Hillary being a corporatist. But then you look at the actions of Trump. And he's like a corporatist and someone trying to cram uh, traditionalism down, down everyone's throats. Well, you know, you need to go with the traditional things that are associated with the majority culture. It's disappointing. And so the Trump administration is going to be very culturalist. Very, very, very culturalist. And I I am disappointed that so many people aren't looking past some of the labels that people are using. People are saying the Trump administration is racist. Well, no, not really. It's not racist. It's culturalist. And I, I understand the need to have some people at least somewhat assimilate into our culture. That's a reasonable argument. But you don't try to force the people who have been here a long time, who are a part of the, the vast uh, uh, array of, of, of diversity that we have here, that's already here, that's already, it's totally, it's a permanent part of our culture, and try to clamp down on it more to be more, well, Christian culture. And even though the whole Christian culture, it could could be considered not the right term, because does that really represent what Christianity is supposed to be about? Not really, but it's what it's morphed into in this country. That's why when people talk about Christianity in this country, here in the United States, it is not the same thing as when Christianity is discussed in other countries. It's just not not even Canada isn't the same as us when it comes to Christianity. You know, United States ha United States Christianity has a very particular thing about it. I mean, it doesn't really follow Christ at all. It's it's not it's like so far removed from it. Um, you know, there are all these these memes going around and these cartoons of uh, uh, Republican Jesus. I think there's even a, a Family Guy episode that has 
a really fat Republican Jesus. And uh, it, it's it's funny. I, I think that's a I, I think that's a funny skit. But you know the the Christianity in this country, or, or so many people who are calling themselves Christians, you're definitely ruining the name of anything that's been good about Christianity. I mean, look at how people, some of the Republicans were saying about the Pope when the Pope was saying, hey, you know, uh, 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 one of the things is to, to, to welcome people with open arms. And some of the Republicans are saying to the Pope, oh, well, the Pope shouldn't be getting involved in politics. And, uh, and I'm just like... <laughs> So now caring, caring about your fellow man is politics. All right. Well, I suppose it is. I suppose just about any subject could be political. But, uh, yeah, now, now the Pope is, is spreading liberalism. Got to watch out for those commies, right? Those commie popes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, so yeah, culturalism, and ha us having this natural fear of things that we don't understand is, is, well, natural, it's natural, it's natural. So I, I get that, but if we are to be using our intelligence, we have to get past those kinds of fears. Now, I'm talking about the United States here, okay? Um, and so when I talk about problems with Trump's policies, I talk about problems that are going on here in the United States. I am specifically talking about the United States. I'm not talking about the UK. I'm not talking about anywhere else in Europe. I'm not talking about Australia because all of those countries, all of you have completely different issues. You have some issues that are in common with, with you know, like especially in Europe. Europe has a number of issues that are in common they're not the same as what we're dealing with here. So when I make some of these statements, um, I'm not applying this to Europe. And then do not follow this up. Well, you need to think more globally. Look, I live in this country. I need to be able to focus on the things that are specific to this country. If you're going to take this... I, 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 someone could consider it egalitarianism. Oh, if you're going to, well, that's not even the right word either. If, you, if you're going to have some sort of view, it needs to be something that applies globally. And my response is, fuck off. Every country is going to have different things that it needs to deal with. You know, every country has their own problems and those countries need to deal with their problems. So, having said that, the war on drugs is culturalist. And it looks like, uh, you know, Trump's going to be ramping that up and just like, you know, just like uh, good old Reagan, right? Let's enforce one way of life on everyone. Now, I guess the advantage to that is, is, you know, in the creative world in Hollywood and all of that, the more that you try to cram one type of, of, of culture as being the, the superior one and the only thing that we should be focusing on, the only thing we should be caring about, um, it makes people who are of other cultures or countercultures thrive because they're like, oh, hell no. And it gives them something reasonable to rebel against. Lately, some of the stuff that people have been rebe rebelling against is fucking stupid. That's some of why we're seeing some of the SJW stuff. So I can see some of the positives in what's happening here. I, I can There are some positives. They're weird positives. Um, but there are some positives. 
And maybe if we can keep that kind of thing up in actually being creative in the things that we're rebelling against and rebelling against things that are reasonable to rebel against, yeah, if we can keep that up for long enough, you know, maybe we can get through these, these next four years or, unfortunately, potentially next eight years if Trump doesn't get... Uh, either impeached or assassinated or something else or removed from office for reasons we've never had happen in the country before. Um, you know, if there was a coup or something, if the military suddenly takes over the government or something, you know. Um, but, yeah, that sort of thing may get us through this. Um there does need to be in, in a country such as ours there does need to be some rebellion going on and, and that might sound weird but um, most good creative things and, and having our creative flow and having new ideas on all sides and on every aspect of society new ideas are usually based on some on rebelling against something. It could be rebelling against seeing the same type of something everywhere all the time. Well, I'm tired of seeing the same type of thing everywhere. Let's do something radically different and maybe we'll stand out. And maybe it'll catch on. And more people taking chances because they're rebelling against something. Um I don't know, I'm, I'm hypothesizing too, uh, but I'm also just analyzing the way that I see a lot of stuff. Some of the reason why music, it, particularly genres that normally revolved around, around being rebellious, like rock, um, you know, have sucked in recent years. I'm sorry it sucked. The same problem has happened in that as, as, as most of the other popular genres, where... It's no longer about the music. It's about using the studio to make it sound... Oh, it has to sound perfect. You know? And to me, when something sounds perfect, it's completely uh, lacking... Uh, it, it's, it's basically sterile. It's completely sterile. And there can be some incredible artists, some incredible musicianship, some incredibly skilled people, some some people with, with musical vision. And they get ran through this machine of the newer way of producing, and it still sounds sterile. So... Yeah, just let's just say I'm I'm not a fan a fan of of what's happened to recording. Um, experimentation just seems to have gone out the window, just like in movies. Experimentation of the ways of filming, uh, cinematography, some elements of choreography, uh, all these things have just everything's become standard. Music, and I'll go back to music, music genres. You know, if you're a musician, you're expected to, oh, well, look, we have so many music genres now. Aren't you so happy? Yeah, it's like having, yeah, great, we have 500 channels of shit, right? You know, on TV, right? It's like, yay, yes, there are, there are all these things broken up this way. What if you want to make something different? Well, then find one of those things and try to fit into it. I mean, it's, it's this new version of what, what uh, diversity is supposed to be. Instead of just doing your own thing, and, and it might happen to fall into c certain categories, it's, no, do something that, fa that makes something for one of these categories, and we'll judge it on how well you fit the category. And I'm just like, wow, what happened? You know? <laughs> um, in the 90s, there were so many things that fit into the, the, the label of alternative rock. So, so many things. It was vast. And that was kind of a nice thing because people could just, you know. But the way things are now, oh, there's there's a label for every little little 
change in type of music. And so you're supposed to focus on, you're a musician, so you need to focus on this little narrow, oh, well, well if you do too many things, then, then uh, uh, yeah, then people don't know how to categorize you. That's good if people don't know how to categorize you. The musician has done their job when you can't, when they cannot, their music, they've done their job as far as being an original artist. Okay, don't get me wrong. There, there's, there's plenty of, of room for, for covers and, and people who stay within certain genres. I'm not trying to diss them. Okay, but when it comes to someone wanting to truly do original works, they have done their job. If you have a hard time categorizing them, and so, man, I'm just rambling on a whole bunch of shit, aren't I here? Um. That type of thing, I think we are going to see an increase of, because we're now rebelling against something that's reasonable to rebel against. The the thing that we're rebelling against isn't reasonable, but it's re reasonable to rebel against what is in front of us now. <laughs> so, um, people are going to really start to see a lot of problems with the patterns of what makes our culture what it is. Um, what are the patterns in history that we're seeing repeat? What are the patterns in a whole bunch of stuff? How can we find something new within all of this stuff? Because things are obviously starting to suck for a lot of people, so let's let the human spirit, so to speak, um, you know, thrive and, and take advantage of this situation. Failure to thrive is a terrible thing. So we shall see.